With oil prices continuing to set record highs, ethanol is attracting a lot of attention as a homegrown alternative to gasoline. Much of that attention has been focused on E85, the alternative fuel that is 85% ethanol for use in flexible fuel vehicles. In addition, some gas stations are adding blender pumps that dispense various ethanol blends between 10% and 85%. At the touch of a button, motorists at this South Dakota gas station can choose between E10, E20, E30, or E85. Though there are about 6 million flexible fuel vehicles on the road today that are compatible with the higher ethanol blends, increasingly owners of standard vehicles are asking whether they too could fuel up with fuel beyond 10%. But because automakers do not cover more than 10% ethanol by warranty, some concerns have been raised. With no research currently available on this topic, the American Coalition for Ethanol has commissioned a study to see what impact higher blends of ethanol would have on a non-flex fuel vehicle. This Chevy Tahoe was donated to the program by Ron Fagan, president of Fagan Incorporated, an ethanol plant design build firm in Granite Falls, Minnesota. Though it is not a flexible fuel vehicle, it has often been filled up with E85. It's a 2000 Tahoe had a 5.7 liter engine in it and it ran 105,496 miles. 98% of the time it had E85. The only time it didn't have E85 if they were in a location where they couldn't purchase it. Alan Casperson, fuel researcher, and Ron Scatvold, head of the automotive department at Lake Area Technical Institute, have torn down the Tahoe to see how the E85 has impacted the engine. The results may surprise you. We found some very positive uh, responses or uh, effects that took place with the engine, and, and I guess we're happy and proud to be able to show that. It's called a spark plug charge sheet, and what we're looking at is normal operation or uh, looking around the porcelain on the spark plug, we see, I call it straw effect, or they call it a grayish, brownish type material looking. And when we look at the valve, we see that same color. And so what we're saying is that the engine ran on normal operation with E85 fuel. And as you can see, when we look at the, the seats in the cylinder head, they all look like normal wear. In fact, I've seen engines with less miles that look worse than this that was using other fuels. This portion of the video is going to deal with the fuel system. As we just look at, this is the fuel pump out of the Chevy Tahoe with 105 496 miles. This is one out of a vehicle that used the same, it's, it wasn't using uh, E85, but it was out of a Chevrolet vehicle that had the same part number fuel pump. It had, this was in the high 80,000 miles. The fuel pump itself is discolored comparison to what we see here, same part numbers and so on. The thing that I really want to point out is the armatures. The armatures from that actually do the pumping inside of the fuel pump. And as we look at the wear on the one that came out of the E85, there's hardly any wear, slight wear. The one that came out of the vehicle that was in the high 80,000 miles basically failed, was using other fuels rather than E85, and there's a significant amount of wear, and it failed before the 100,000 mile area. The other thing that I want to point out, they always say if you use ethanol, you're going to have, your lines are going to be brittle, they're going to break down and so on, and that was just the opposite that we found with the fuel lines that actually pump the fuel out of, or from the fuel pump that took it to the engine. I'd also like to show, and this is the, we cut the catalytic converters apart, and that's in the exhaust stream, and this is the right bank for this 2000 uh, Chevy Tahoe, and by the looks of that, I'm not sure if we cut a new one, if it would look any better. What we're looking at on these two tables is the internal parts of our engine. What we've done is uh, disassemble this 5.7 liter 
engine out of the 2000 Tahoe, and we've taken and we've looked at the internal parts, looking for any type of significant wear that would be caused by the use of E85 in a non-E85 vehicle. The internal parts then are all lubricated by the engine oil, and uh, this would be an area then that maybe the E85 would impact, would be the uh, lubricity of the engine oil. But what we found in this particular case is that this particular part is camshaft, which opens and closes the valves. This, for the most part, on 105,000 miles, shows no more significant wear than a vehicle that would have run non-E85 or regular fuel. Uh, so we don't see really any impact in that particular area. We move down to our crankshaft. Our crankshaft right here for 105,000 miles does show some wear. We would expect that to be so with this particular uh, mileage on a vehicle. This, however, does not show any, again, significant wear uh, based upon what we see as a visual inspection for either the crankshaft journals that we see here or the bearings that uh, the crankshaft journals ride on. Our engine oil pump, uh, again, is the uh, part that pumps our engine oil uh, throughout our engine. Uh, this, again, shows no type of significant wear uh, for a vehicle that has this type of mileage on it. The spark plugs that we uh, have removed right here. Uh, look like they are the uh, spark plugs, the original spark plugs that came from the engine. Again, these particular parts uh, show uh, no added wear or premature wear for 105,000 miles. This is the engine block. Uh, this is the part that uh, normally, if there's going to be any significant wear, we're going to see this type of wear on our cylinders and dealing with our piston and ring area. Uh, what we see on our uh, pistons right here uh, is uh, normal accumulation of carbon on the top. There's no abnormal uh, accumulation, so there's nothing that would uh, indicate any type of a, a concern as far as running the E85. The other area of concern then would be our piston rings uh, being able to float in the grooves uh, so that they are free, so they would seal into the cylinder wall. Once again, uh, these are all free, uh, don't show any type of uh, problems as far as the use of uh, E85 uh, in this particular vehicle. One area of significant wear that we would look at would be on the inside of the uh, block would be the cylinders. And kind of a rule of thumb to look for wear is that we would check for a ridge uh, on our cylinder and we would just use your fingernail and bring it up and try to catch that ridge. On this particular block with 105,000 plus miles on it, there is no ridge whatsoever. So we don't see any wear at all in the cylinders right here. And this is typically an area where we would see significant wear as far as the block goes. But this is in exceptionally good shape, uh, no ridge that's in here. And also, if you look closely, you can still see the crosshatch pattern made from the uh, original machining when this block was put together at the factory. Though the organization is not advising people with standard vehicles to fill up with more than 10% ethanol at this time, this study does seem to show that the potential is there for future use of higher concentrations of ethanol. Well, I think, Ron, to summarize this, some of the unique things that I really appreciated and saw is the fact that cleanliness of the engine, the lack of wear with the amount of mileage that the engine has, and uh, I just think it's really significant that it is fantastic with the end results. The part that I think uh, is real significant uh, from my viewpoint is the fact that uh, before we took the engine apart, we did some uh, preliminary tests uh, dealing with compression. Uh, we also hooked up a scan tool to look at the computer to see what it was doing as far as uh, fuel delivery. And uh, with running 85% ethanol, uh, it was uh, pretty amazing that uh, things looked uh, pretty good as far as what the computer is doing. Uh, there is uh, some areas where uh, there may be uh, uh, a little bit of a concern as far as the fuel delivery, but overall for a vehicle that has got uh, 105,000 miles on it and not really made, made for E85, uh, that part of it was uh, really quite surprising to me as to how clean the engine was actually burning as far as the emissions go.